Let's take you back in time for a moment when a woman named Norma McCorvey sued Henry Wade, who was an official in Texas, over the right to an abortion. The court gave her the name Jane Roe. The case went to the Supreme Court, and justices ruled 7 to 2 in favor of Roe. In 1989, Roe was represented by Gloria Allred. Gloria joins us now live to share her reaction tonight after just attending one of the protests in downtown L.A. Also with us, with a different perspective, is Jonathan Keller. He is the president and CEO of the California Family Council. Uh, we appreciate him sharing his perspective tonight. Um, Gloria, let's start with you. We have talked about this issue for so many years together now, talked about your personal connection to this issue. This is one of the causes of your life. Now that it's finally happened, um, which a lot of us expected, what's going through your mind tonight? Well, first of all, I want to commend all of the protesters. Yes, they're disrupting life in Los Angeles by being on the freeway and being on the pavements and then in the street. But our lives are being disrupted in a major way, in a very dangerous way. So here's to them. I agree. We won't go back. It is devastating. It is catastrophic. It is so dangerous what has happened to women and that they are losing control over their lives and it's not to be tolerated we have to go to the street we have to go to the streets we have to go to the state house the courthouse we have to go to the white house and we have to take our country back from the extremists the extremists who do not trust women to make decisions about their own body who want to control our bodies and who want to control our lives and who are putting women and and young girls' lives at risk, we will fight back. We will win. It will be a long battle, but I'm confident that we will win it. Jonathan, your thoughts? Gloria says this is dangerous. Uh, she says people that you support are extremists. Your reaction? Well, first off, Alex, thanks for having me, and it, it really is an honor to be across from uh, Gloria. I know she has a legendary career, not just on this issue, but on so many issues. Um, look, I think the honest truth is that we, we do have a difference of opinion here. Uh, we disagree on some fundamental issues, uh, but I think an important thing for us to remember is what the Supreme Court is doing here is actually, I think, a pro-democracy move. It is returning this right back to the people and to their elected representatives. Now. What that's going to mean here in California, obviously, not a whole lot is going to change. In fact, we've already seen Governor Newsom and several other state leaders that are talking about expanding abortion rights in the state of California. But my concern as the leader of California Family Council and as a pro-life advocate, I just think that a lot of the ways we're talking about this is really out of step with the vast majority of not just Americans, but even Californians. Um, this is an issue that brings up a lot of heat, a lot of tension. I was just at the Capitol in Sacramento on Wednesday. We had over 1,000 people in triple-digit heat uh, for the second annual California March for Life. And it is absolutely true that there is a, there's a strong division of opinions on this. But that's why I think a one-size-fits-all policy from the federal government is just not a good idea. I think this should be left up to individual states. And even within the state of California, I think there is a lot of common ground. I think, for example, that most people in our state, they don't want abortion to be used as birth control. They don't want abortion to be used for sex selection purposes. Um, I would hope that we'd be able to come together and find ways to reach across the aisle and provide pro-woman, pro-child, pro-family policies that are good for all Californians. Well, Jonathan, if I may respond, first of all, you know, with all due respect, uh, I, I, you know, uh, the, the, the family, you know, the anti-choice movement, which calls itself the pro-life movement, which I will call the mandatory motherhood movement, uh, you know, is really not implementing family values in some states. For example, there are states that even if a teenager gets pregnant and even if she wants to have an abortion and even if her parents agree that she should be able to have a safe and legal abortion, that family will not be honored in that state. Their choice will not be honored. They will not be able to get a legal abortion in that state. So, so much for family values. And again, I don't agree that a fetus should have, or, or that even a, uh, a fertilized egg should have more rights 
than an adult woman. Yes, we're pro-choice in California, and we are darn proud of it as well. And we fought to make this a pro-choice state, and we are going to make sure that it stays a pro-choice state. But what about all the other women and girls' lives you are placing at risk? Let's not live in a fantasy world, Jonathan. There are people who are going to have abortions, but they're going to be illegal, they're going to be unsafe abortions, and they're going to die from infections, or they're going to die, or they're going to be maimed. And, you know, this is not right to put a woman and a, and a young girl's life at risk. Poor women and young women and rural women and women of color, you know they don't have a voice, you know they don't have power, and now they don't have rights to control their own body, and that is wrong and cruel and dangerous. Jonathan, your response? Well, you know, it's interesting. One of those states that is full of a lot of poorer women, especially women of color, is Louisiana. Uh, we had State Senator Katrina Jackson from the state of Louisiana speak to us on the steps of the Capitol just this last Wednesday. Uh, Senator Jackson is an African-American woman, but she is also pro-life. And I think that we really can have a difference of opinion on this. We don't have to, I think, uh, demonize each other. We don't have to attack one another. And I'm actually grateful to see that in many parts of the country, the life issue, the desire to try to protect both unborn children, but also their mothers and their families, it really can be a bipartisan issue. I think this is something that there's a lot more that we have in common as Americans. I think nobody wants to see young people uh, faced with a difficult pregnancy. Nobody wants to see a child born into a home where they're not going to be loved and taken care of. There's a lot of common ground, and I think what we need to do, I know it's hard on a day like today, but we need to try to find ways to tone down some of the rhetoric and hopefully reach across the aisle for the good of families and communities. Well, well, Jonathan, with all due respect, I don't intend to tone it down. I am not going to be silent in the face of injustice, and all those protesters and marchers that you're seeing are not going to be silent while you decide what they can do with their own bodies. With all due respect, sir, again, you will never be pregnant. You never have been pregnant. You don't know what it's like to be pregnant. You don't know what it's like to be a single mother supporting children and not able to afford another pregnancy and uh, to deliver and, and give birth and support another child. You have no idea what that is like. You don't know what it's like to have to undergo an illegal abortion. So come on. This is, this is, you know, you can have pretty words and we can talk about compromise, but there's no compromise about, because you, you yeah. have no right to decide what I can do with my body. Okay, I, unfortunately we are out of time, although I would love to keep this conversation going, and I appreciate both of you uh, sharing your perspectives, which are so passionate. Um, thank you both, Jonathan and Gloria. Uh, really appreciate the time. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you. Still to come.